Hi guys, this is Lynn. Thank you so much for joining me today for Journey to Be Me. Have you ever wanted to start your own podcast? Well, sit back. We'll be right back to talk about it in just a second. Hey guys, I am so excited to talk to two people who are very versed in podcasting. Today I have Gary and Chris. So let's start with Gary. Gary, tell us a little bit about yourself. What's up? Uh, Gary Lee, born Houston native uh, and fell in love with podcasting probably about six or seven years ago watching a video-based podcast from a network called Twit. um, And that's more technology-based podcasts. And they span the gamut of 20 to 30 different tech podcast so you had to really be on that nerd side of the fence to truly enjoy all the content that the network offered um and i just dislike the fact that i rarely saw someone who looked like me Mm. on their show you know and i'm like i know so many people in this houston area that are in technology that are african-american but i rarely ever saw that that demographic Mm -hmm. displayed as a professional on a show so i got with individuals and said you know what we can build some content and uh and that's the short span of how we built the sphere which is where we're at right now awesome thank you so much so chris tell me a little bit about what you're doing about your podcast um, well, my name is Christopher Griggs, and I'm the the host of uh, the Rogue Radio. It's a um, it's a podcast off Anchor FM. Um, I just started it because I was in the YouTube space, and I found it to be a bit more crowded. I'm I'm a lover of tech too, mm-hmm. and um, I really started it because my girlfriend said that it was something that I should do. She gave me the name of the C. Griggs, the Rogue, and everything. And it was like, you know, you're always so adversarial. And you always have a story to tell. Okay. But, you know, um, you should just go ahead and do it. And I, I started off doing that. And ultimately, life led me down another path to where as um, I didn't have the, the, the resources to be able to put out the quality of content to be competitive in that field. Okay. So I found Anchor. Um, along that journey and I saw that it instantly allowed you to be uh, monetized which uh, that was that was my my biggest um, incentive of getting me over into this arena and finding out that it was much less saturated Mm. so it it allowed me to just want to just throw myself in there a a lot more I guess more earnest you know and, and and give it my my whole my whole goal okay and and kind of i started out and i still do youtube you know every week wiggles wednesday don't forget to check me out guys on yes. youtube lynn delaney popping <laughs> it is so i do it every week and so when someone mentioned it to me oh you should do a podcast you should mm-hmm. do a podcast i'm like oh who uh, a what, uh, what? Mm-hmm. okay yeah I, i'm gonna be right on that okay, okay. and it I, I i looked at it as a natural progression from what i was already doing with youtube and I said, okay, well, let me just, this must be the next step. And so I got into it, and that's why it I contacted is. Gary. You know, and I, I kind of made it a thing that I was doing in addition to, you know, what I do on YouTube. And now that I look back on this, it's become more of a uh, an addition, something else to add to my, kind of not, not totally different, but sure. an addition to what I was already doing. So, Gary, can you tell me, as the owner of The Sphere, Mm -hmm. um, can you tell us exactly what podcasting (laughs) is so that we can understand, so that I can understand at this this juncture? You know what's funny? When I'm having conversations with individuals about podcasting and for, you know, anybody who's listening right now on Spotify, they understand that the term podcast has transcended what it used to be, Mm -hmm. right? It used Mm -hmm. to be this thing where you would dock this old school, you know, scroll wheel, uh, iPod next to an a iTunes based computer which was only Macintosh at the mm-hmm. time mm-hmm. and you would get these uh, this audio content that was moved over via this cable to that device that and you could get it whenever they dropped it you just had to make sure you docked mm-hmm. and then this was this thing called a podcast okay. so it's just this piece of audio that were people were having conversations on mm-hmm. and i watched it grow from that to wireless connectivity to get that same content mm-hmm. to that content then moving into the video space mm-hmm. years ago that people didn't know about mm-hmm. to today where podcasting from my perspective is simply now an encapsulation piece where mm-hmm. you can put anything into it, it could, okay. whether it's a conversation like we're having mm-hmm. whether it's a, a, a video based conversation whether it's music whether it's somebody reading an audio book someone's telling a story podcasting has transformed to be anything and it's more so about getting content on demand right. getting content when you want it it's that DVR 
in your pocket. Right, okay. Right. And that's okay. how I, I try to explain to individuals now. It's, it, it could be whatever you want. Okay. So it, it, it it's video, it's audio, music. I mean, well, I guess audio is still be. music. Yeah, um, it's pretty much like you said, content on demand. Mm-hmm. Um, so tell me, um, I, when I when I when I asked you guys both here, I really wanted to know the differences between what Chris does as an independent and what you do as the owner of a podcast studio. So, sure. Chris, um, can you tell me a, a little bit more about your podcast? Like, I know you mentioned that your girlfriend kind of mentioned, kind of got you into it, but tell me a little bit more about what you do and how long you've been doing it. Well, I mean, uh, initially, before this, I, I, I started off, at, I was 16, and I used to work at, at McDonald's. Okay. And <laughs> I was working the drive through and I remember quite often people would say, hey, man, you know, you had a a voice for radio. Voice radio. It even transcended on to when I worked at the Buffalo Wild Wings. I okay. had some people who even tried to help me there with uh, voiceover work and things of that nature. So mm-hmm. there was always this thing about the dynamics behind my voice that I always recognized that people paid attention to. Okay. And once I got into the service industry, there came this whole Samuel Jackson thing. <laughs> um, you kind of got the tone, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. See, so you hear it, uh-huh. and I. I, sometimes I don't even hear, but when I get on a roll, I'm like I can see where people can uh, can get that from. And so coming from the church and stuff like that, growing up, my mom and my brother were singers. I wasn't. I was the one that rapped and stuff like okay. that in the church. So um, I didn't really have that kind of a voice. I was really kind of shy about it. And so after hearing all this for so long, I just said, well, you know what? Fuck it. I'm just going. Well, no, you don't. Have yeah. To, um, so we're I'm just going to. Listen, it's right. Go ahead. <laughs> Keep it rolling. Yeah, right. I'm just going. I'm just going to do me, man. Yeah. And so that's and that's what it was. It was just like, man. After after a while, I just said, hey, I got to go ahead and just give it a shot. And I guess that's the whole independent thing, and that's how the rogue thing works. Is you know, um, I'm taking all the unnecessary steps of of going down this independent route to get to where Mm -hmm. the sphere is because you know that's why i ultimately uh aspire to be is to be you know someone who owns you know a multimedia um uh, independently owned market you know down here in the houston area because it's you know it's a it's a popping it's a popping city it's full of minorities and it's ripe for for this type of uh, this type of talk and i think that these type of discussions need to be need to be had mm-hmm. on a broader scale than what we've normally we've normally had especially in the minority community especially in our community and when i when i started this and when people suggested hey you know you should you should get into podcasting because mm-hmm. you have this thing about you you should you should do it and i'm like okay and i looked into it and i started looking up equipment costs the yeah. camera costs mm-hmm. and lighting yeah. costs yeah. and costs 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 come on and i was like oh uh, who gonna be able to do this you, you know i know uh, what okay <laughs> So I said, and a friend of mine recommended me to Gary, and Gary and I, I came in, you know, we talked about it, and I, it just fit me. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm not saying I won't ever be independent. I may, but at this particular stage in my life, if I had to wait to buy all this equipment, mm-hmm. baby, the podcast would be two, three years down the line. Yeah. So, um, Gary, can you further explain why someone like myself would want to come to a place like The Sphere? You know what? what's great about just you being here at the sphere come on what you said earlier which was you're growing it's adding something to your repertoire okay you're adding to your skill set to make you more profitable in some way shape form or fashion whether it's a short-term transition or plan or whether it's a long-term transition so i talk to any podcaster um i built this place for us for people to be able to get their dreams out to be able to get their content out for people to be able to to not have to become experts at post-production yes. picking equipment yes. understanding how to curate or run a show uh having space to bring in guests and not mm-hmm. want to have them in their home mm-hmm. basically everything someone needs to transition from just doing this as a hobby to say Mm -hmm. you know i've got enough of material in a portfolio that i could pitch this to a cbs to a netflix Mm -hmm. to somebody else because i believe in me Mm -hmm. and we we're simply providing a vehicle to do so we're we're helping people get their dreams and and it has been an excellent vehicle for me because you know like like i said if i had to wait on the equipment when Mm -hmm. i'd be able to finance it it would be down the line and like i said i need to add it just seemed like natural progression to me sure but now it's not so much like i said before not a progression but kind of something that I'm adding to it, mm-hmm. you know, to my resume, if you would have it. Oh, 
yeah. um, of things that I'm able to do now. Um, this place has been very uh, convenient for me in terms of scheduling um, and, and allow, allowed me to put my message out to an even broader audience that may not have had a chance to, you know, experience it before. Sure. So um, I want to switch gears a little bit. Chris. Yes. <laughs> Tell me, how do you build an audience podcasting? Because my little 24 views, boo, I need to get it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, listen, you know, so whatever you call it, what, how well, I need an audience. Well, Where y'all at? I'm, I'm not very much. Um, I've been doing this since October. Okay. And Longer than me. As, as it stands right now, I get around about 26 to 28 listens per episode, which, I mean, that's that's fine for me right now because I'm strong um, too. <laughs> well, a, a lot of my audience comes from the fact that people have followed me from through all of my my business ventures, from from okay. me being uh, working at the Houston Post to whatever you know back when I was nine on up to me growing up now to uh, my my food truck and stuff like that. So a lot of oh, this is just truck. an extension of my overall brand. So it leaked over from Facebook and stuff like that, and I started um, a, a company back in 2018 that was more based around social media but i needed i needed a face for the brand mm -hmm. so i i this the rogue became the face for the brand and so i'm using that as as how i build my audience because it has to be totally independent of of greek street eats for certain fa personal reasons and things mm -hmm. of that nature um but it's i've started doing it basically by um by talking to people at my tables, um, talking to people on the street, anybody that'll listen, you know, I, I'll, I'll, hey, you know, check out my podcast. Okay. Um, even if it, it gets down to the point of having to um, do Facebook ads and stuff like that, I'll do that as well. You know, um, right now I'm just I'm, I'm working on trying to make it as organic as possible before I work in work in the whole advertising advertising and, and organic growth is, is just as important I guess as being able to put money behind marketing your channel um, mm -hmm. so tell me Gary mm -hmm. from a, 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 a owner of a podcast studios perspective um, how does one build an audience podcast I know you and I have had a conversation yeah. about this yeah, before we have. you know I stick to my guns on these three things right first and foremost is consistency okay podcasters who are consistent you mm -hmm. know and i could start shouting out podcasts here in houston um where people are at episode 150 180 or, wow. or crossing 100 consistency every i was on the phone with a podcaster earlier she told me she records five to six shows a month and sometimes she may do it all in one week okay and then allow them to be scheduled over time mm -hmm. okay. and she's got enough content through august that hadn't dropped yet wow so weekly dropping new content so consistency is the key mm -hmm. the next piece of that is your interviews right, right? Okay. having the and i want to say the right people but if you're speaking to your avatar right and for those that are watching us on youtube if you're talking to that avatar we want to always ensure that we're giving that avatar the professional in the room Right. Okay. So making sure you got the right people sitting in that chair next to you, sitting at that coffee table next to you, sitting mm -hmm. on location next to you. Okay. And that person's given the business. And last but not least, one thing that you cannot not do is market. There's no reason why every Absolutely. friend on your Absolutely. timeline mm -hmm. doesn't know that you have a show. You read, they, okay. they you right. I mean, and I'm not saying drown them every day. There's a strategic way to deliver content mm -hmm. and make it fun and okay. enjoyable, and at the same time, get you know your call to actions, telling people to hey, you got to subscribe. Hey, make sure you tune into this latest episode. Hey, I talked about X, Y, and Z. There are ways to do it, but you got to market that content. Right. Every day, there should be something that's having conversations with people, and then there's some okay. tie-in back to what you've created, what you've produced. Okay. Those three things, they bring they bring viewership. When I look at the network as a whole, before yesterday, okay. and that's before we just added all the new shows, and welcome again to the network. Um, <laughs> hey, right. we, we crossed roughly about 50,000 views or subscribers per month. Okay. Right? And we're still growing. And, okay. and, and I feel like we're still at our infancy. My thing is to get us to 100,000 a month. Right. And then from there, we're talking a million a month. Now, okay. I can have bigger conversations why? Because people are subscribed. People are, are paying Absolutely. attention. Okay. And opportunities for the podcasters just start to rise up. But it takes those three consistent things. Okay. And I, 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 I hear you when you talk so talk about consistency. Because mm -hmm. when I started my YouTube channel, I just started because, like I said, I was I was hurt healing up a difficult breakup. Come on. It happens, Ooh, child. Lord. Let me touch you. Let me you know touch you and agree. 
I was healing. I'm still healing. You know who you are, boo. Um, <laughs> so I was healing, and I just got in front of that camera, and I just started talking. And then Come the on. next week, people were like, well, what happened? Are you not good this week? Come on. Next week, what about this week? And mm-hmm. so it became a thing. And so when I decided to move from inside of my car right. <laughs> to, to, to Facebook, I, I told myself that I was going to be consistent. Yeah. So that means if I have to sit on and record five wigless Wednesdays in a row to be able to have them every week, Come on. I do it. Right. And if I, when I, if I have to come here and see you guys at the Spirit three times, you know, in a week to get that content out for Saturday, that's what I'm doing. Yeah, and right. so um, it, it, it is a, a really bit of a sacrifice. Mm-hmm. Um, so, Segway again. Come on. Tell us a little bit about monetization because this, this is getting a little bit expensive. So, I need some hey, sponsors. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> hey it's important. So, um, when we're looking at monetization, I always want to make sure that we're we're definitely looking at the standard advertising model, right? Mm -hmm. So we're talking about pre-rolls and Mm mid-rolls. We're talking about cost per meal. We're talking about that cost per thousand. So for Mm -hmm. every thousand subscribers, the average charge is $15 for a Mm pre-roll, $25 for a mid-roll. And then you gotta look at the length of your show to decide how many advertising breaks you want to insert. You want to insert too many to your show just feels like a a talking ad, Mm -hmm. but you want to have the right amount that way your your audience understands okay. and your advertisers don't feel inundated as if they're battling with other advertisers okay so i want to stop you for a second sure what you started off saying it sounded just like uh chinese okay you said uh the cost per meal cpm yeah. it's a model that is basically you associate a dollar amount per 1,000 subscribers. Okay. So let's say you have 1,000 subscribers on your show. Okay. And your show is 30 minutes long, and let's say you got two ads. Mm-hmm. That ad would make 1,000 or one for cost per meal, so cost right. per 1,000, mm-hmm. one times, if it's a pre-roll, $15. If it's a mid-roll, 25 So let's say you do both of those for one advertiser. Nestle, for mm-hmm. instance, mm-hmm. they want to advertise. Mm-hmm. It would be 40 times that one. Not 1,000, but one okay. because it's cost per thousand. Okay. So 40 times one. So that ad spot would be worth $40. Mm-hmm. Okay. So Does that make sense? Okay. It makes perfect sense. Mm-hmm. But what makes someone like Nestle or, mm-hmm. you know, Hershey or whoever, any of the chocolate manufacturers? Mm-hmm. I like chocolate. Come on. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> Come on. What make them want to advertise? Why, why me? Well, uh, let me tell you why. Okay. So let's say you really did like chocolate. Let's okay. say your podcast. I, know I do like chocolate. But, but let's say your podcast was. Uh, no pun intended. Let's <laughs> say, <laughs> it was the chocolate factor. Okay. Right. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I just, I'm chocolate just banana okay. clip okay. or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. Um, and you're reviewing different types of chocolate from all around the world. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, who's your avatar? Your avatar is the person who's receiving this content mm-hmm. is someone who loves chocolate okay. just like you. Okay. So as Nestle, if I'm on their content and, and branding team, I'm like, I need to get... I need to reach these viewers that are associated to these podcasts. Right. Let me tap the chocolate factory. Okay. And I noticed that they've got 10,000 subscribers a month. Mm-hmm. Let me get a, a, a pre-roll and a mid-roll for a couple of months on their show okay. because they're speaking to my potential customer mm-hmm. every month. And guess what? Because you've got those 10,000, I know that they know you, they trust you, and they like you. Okay. Right. So now they're going to do business based on your recommendations. You're the expert in their room. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. So that's why that particular advertiser is going to talk to the chocolate factory because the chocolate factory has a direct connection to those potential customers so for someone like myself or for someone like gary what is the next step is it to continue to build quality content always you know uh what is the next step in terms of trying to monetize what it is that we do and and that's just one aspect of it but the it goes back to growing your audience right okay um and with those things of being consistent of having proper interviews um of marketing your stuff at the same time you've got to curate great content Mm -hmm. you can't just have a conversation to have a conversation i think that that, and that's okay because at at some point we're we're self-healing we're giving uh, right. of ourselves, right? right? So we want to have conversations that, that kind of aid us personally. And at the same time, if you built a show that's strategic for somebody, right. you've got to sow into them. And okay. if I'm constantly building content that sows into an individual, guess what? My show is going to grow as long as I'm also doing my other things. Now there's value. Okay. Now I've been consistent with great value, great interviews, okay. great marketing, value. So basically, pretty much do what we've been doing. Come on, and mm-hmm. be consistent. And we got, right, okay. you keep so, it pushing. Okay. Um, I, if I could, if I could just say, um, Wigless Wednesdays. Yeah, Wigless Wednesdays is something that is not. 
particularly marketed to the male audience, you know, as you would think. But <laughs> um, these are not real dress. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, there, there's that thing that's going nowadays, yeah, you know. Yeah, but yeah. but Somebody, still, yeah. though, um, once you get behind um, your Wigless Wednesday's content, you always have something that's relationship or lifestyle, lifestyle right, oriented. Right, right, right. And a lot of that has spoke has rung true to me personally. And um, I just posted on my podcast um, 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 an answer to um, your ignorance is bliss, um, Wigless Wednesday, because. There, we are having these conversations having all the, conversation. the time, right. you know, and now it's just we have a platform to be able to to get these things out. And, and, and people people want to know what's the other side of, of what happens when you go through that significant other's phone, you know, or, uh, you know, I yeah, mean, because I talked about it. If y'all didn't catch that. Well, <laughs> hey, I, I, I gave you what happens to the other yeah, side of that, yeah, man. Yeah, you know, yeah. so check out this last episode I that I posted. Will. I definitely will. You know, it, it, it gets deep, man. It gets four or five months deep. But those things you, you, you would never know that you would find a fan from somebody who's balding but still ain't wearing no wig. Right, you right, know? right. But right. it's this, it's your content. You provide value to me in that aspect. Well, I appreciate you you listening to, to a little bit what I do on YouTube. Um, and like I said, it started off as a wigless thing, but I... I what you I, wearing today? I, I, uh, this is ta- this is tattoo. Tatia? No, this tattoo? is tattoo. Oh, okay. Because the second Tatiana, so oh, okay. this is tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, all right. Yeah. Um, but I, I, it started off as, okay, well, I, my, my wig is off. I'm giving y'all the real me. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the authentic... Real gritty me, Absolutely. no wig. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm I'm gonna be real with you. So yeah, it started off as a review and a wig type thing, but it turned into hey, I'm giving you the real me, and this is my real thoughts on this particular topic, right. my real thoughts on this perspective or whatever my perspective on it. So that's how it kind of turned into. So a lot of people might be like, oh, she just talking about a wig, mm. but if you keep watching, mm-hmm. I always talk about something that is so, of of some value to somebody. Sure. You know, um, so Chris. We talk about the rogue, and I'm so glad that you have responded to some of my things I've done on YouTube. I'm gonna have to definitely yeah. listen. Right? Uh, can you tell me what are your goals for the Rogue Radio from now and beyond? Well, I mean, um, my one year goal is uh, one year from now I want to be at around about. Um, I, I, I'm ambitious. So I, I say at a thousand listeners, at a subscribe listeners. Let's say ten thousand. And um, yeah, come on, right? We can Let's put a, we can put that. we can put Let's a zero that. behind yes. that. Come on. But that. the thing that I'm I'm big about is momentum. Mm. And once you once you put some action in, into place, you'll find that the momentum will start pushing and propelling you quicker than you you you're even ready for sometimes. So I'm just out there and I'm pushing things out there and hoping that it'll all start to congeal. And start to get moving into the same direction that I feel like the momentum is going. Um, so we'll all be congruent. Um, I, I want a thousand list subscribe 10, listeners, thousand. ten thousand, ten, 10, <laughs> in, in, in the next year. In the next um, year. But I, I have some things that are in play for that. Um, like uh, I have like a guerrilla marketing thing that I'm, I'm gonna try. Staying off of West Timer, and my my window faces West Timer. So I thought about putting an LED ticker out there to just you know why not you know just say hey man this is how many subscribe listeners because this is an organic thing i'm i'm doing this all me all the time you know from from my job to to my home you know so i'm trying to look to find uh, all kinds of different creative ways to Mm -hmm. extend my brand and and hopes that you know that you throw enough darts at the board Bored one time you get a bullseye. No, and you will. And I, when I started, like I said, I didn't have all these step and repeats and logos. And <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, when I first started, doing it now. I mean, I, I but I, I knew that I wanted to put a professional face on what Come it was on. I was doing. Come so on. that when I started my YouTube, you didn't see me in a, in a dark room, Mm-mm. you know, with bad lighting and you know, uh, bad sound. I, I wanted to put my best foot forward, and that's another reason why I chose to come to a place like the Spirit because I wanted to put a professional face on what I was doing because right. I felt like there's enough bullshit out there right. already. Right. Right. So, why do I want to control? Tribute to that. Yeah. Um, so, Gary, mm-hmm. what what do you see this beer? Mm-hmm. And what advice do you have Whew. for upcoming podcasts? Child, look, hold on, <laughs> yo. So, it, you know what's what's interesting? It's it's been a very a very conducive pivot, okay. right? Um, you know, I start this in the library of my home. Oh wow! You know, six shows off rip, off jump. I'm sitting in Mike's seat working day in day out you know every night curating content recording content 
um, and that transitioned into 13. You know, I got 40 people coming to my house every week. Some people mm. I don't know would guess tearing up my carpet. Yeah. And and being uncomfortable in that environment mm-hmm. when people wanted me to help them get their shows launched. And I'm okay. like, I don't have the time. It's just me. I can't I can't do this. Right. I don't have the bandwidth. Okay. And then having to build this place, I originally built it because I needed space so that other people could do the things that they need to do. Right. Okay. And now and that's when the network was closed. And now opening the network saying, you know what, we can support podcasters anywhere in the world. We can help them we can be ready uh the liaison with studios and help them, you know, help have conversations with radio people and other people to create content, mm-hmm. you know, help them build their own home studios or professional right, studios. Right, right, right. Being all these different things, it's it's just broadened my horizon. So now the this is what we would call phase two. Okay. Phase three of this is to actually drop the word podcast off of it and just become Sphere Studios okay. and build brick and mortar going into late 2020, early 2021. Okay. I know, okay. I and see it, I see we're it. We're gonna take what we're in right now okay. and multiply roughly by about twenty and okay. then build our first hangar. Okay. So we could do full feature production. Okay. Nice. So okay. now starting to buy acreages and build out very similar to what Tyler Perry has okay. over in Atlanta, okay. mm-hmm. his studio, so that we can have a place here in Houston right. to create content, not just podcasts, but create a talk show, create a full feature film, create music videos, yes. everything that you Absolutely. need. Absolutely. Because we're surrounded by creatives with no place to create. No place mm-hmm. to create. And no that's why I create. built the sphere. And the sphere was, like I said, it was invaluable to me. It has been because it allowed me to broaden what I was doing already. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so I appreciate that opportunity because it, it allowed me to step into an arena, arena that I didn't, didn't even really know existed. Yeah. You know, didn't even really know what the hell a podcast was, oh. you know. <laughs> and so now where I see myself, my goal is to continue to grow my audience, to continue to build my brand. I have a couple of businesses that I plan to start here shortly. Mm-hmm. So I don't know how long I'm going to be doing my nine to five. Come on. You know, I need some sponsors. Mm-hmm. Hey, yeah. come on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> come on through sponsors. Come on, get them. Yeah. Um, and so... I appreciate the opportunity of talking to you and I also appreciate Chris because you've given me a different perspective. You know, um, I know that I would not have been able to do what you've done on my own. So I appreciate you guys coming to talk to me today. Um, Absolutely. So Chris, can you tell us a little bit more about where people can find you so we can listen to The Rogue? Um, you can find me on anchor.fm, um, The Rogue Radio. Uh, you can also find me on Christopher Griggs at Facebook or C Griggs underscore two on Twitter. You can also see underscore Griggs underscore the rogue underscore blah, 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 that thing on uh, Instagram, <laughs> you know, all of underscores. So you put an underscore in between all I'll of that. And um, yeah, you can find me on Instagram there as well. And um, other than that, I, I don't really do too much on, on social media. I'm trying to try and keep things focused on that for right now because it's, it's th- those spaces are, are already murky enough man it's very mm-hmm. murky uh and i know people are tired of me because honey i post and post right. and post you got to though okay you got to, though. i know they're tired of me but hey you know what uh either you're gonna follow me or not come on um, okay come gary on. tell everyone where they can find you and if they want more information about the sphere of how course. they can come on down yeah definitely anywhere online facebook instagram twitter snapchat at the sphere tv um that's at the sphere tv uh if you got any questions about what we do directly shoot us an email podcasting at the sphere dot tv or hit us across uh, any social media platform with at the sphere tv use the coveted hashtag start podcasting and we'll definitely get back with you um or you can go directly to the website for the new people if you just want to start podcasting sphere.tv forward slash start real simple okay, okay well i'm going to declare that chris will have these ten thousand. come on ten thousand let's okay, go we'll ahead speaking into this i'm going to declare that you will have your acreage Hallelujah. and you will have your your production studios it's on. on its way brick and mortar i'm going to mm-hmm. Declare that I will earn this one million dollars, yes. and I will continue to build Speak my subscribers. Facts. I'm right. already knocking on seven hundred, so we're on our there way you on go. YouTube. Speak facts. Okay, um, so guys, there you have it. Uh, the inf- I hope the information that I presented today or that we presented today has been at least a little bit helpful to you. Um, it, as usual, if you want to find me, you can find me on YouTube, Lynn Delaney. Uh, also on all social media platforms, it's Journey to Be Me. Thank you, Chris, and thank you, Gary, Absolutely. so much Most for spending welcome. a little time with me today. And again, Wigless Wednesdays is still a thing on Wednesdays, and the podcast for Journey to Be Me is on Saturdays. So again, I want to tell you, as I always tell you, be better today than you were yesterday, and be better tomorrow than you were today. I'll talk to you soon. Bye bye. <laughs>